Hello everyone and welcome to a week of Linux news for the 5th of February 2017. The Amnesic Incognito Live System, or TAILS for short, is becoming a 64-bit only distro with the release of version 3.0 scheduled for release on the 13th of June 2017. As they point out, most 32-bit computers are at least 10 years old, and that according to bug report stats, only 4% of TAILS users were still using a 32-bit computer. Tails is not the first distribution to move to 64-bit only. My distro of choice, KD Neon, is 64-bit only, and on the application side, Chrome for Linux has moved to 64-bit only. Arch Linux is also heading down the same route with phasing out 32-bit support. The February ISO file is the last that will support 32-bit installation. The next nine months will be a deprecation period where packages will still receive updates, but from November 2017, 32-bit packaging and repository tools will no longer be required. I appreciate the reasoning behind the switch. It takes time and resources to support both system architectures, but with only a small development team, something has to give in order to maintain the overall quality. I think as time goes on, we will see more and more distros moving to 64-bit only. KDE Plasma 5.9 has been released. There have been quite a list of new features, including the reintroduction of Global Menu, a new Task Switcher, redesigned Task Manager tooltips, new Style Network Manager, and new artwork. A link to the full list is in the video description. LibreOffice 5.3 has been released. And looking at the story on OMG Ubuntu, we can see one of the main new features is the Muffin interface. Muffin stands for the My User Friendly and Flexible Interface. It introduces four different layouts for LibreOffice applications, including a Microsoft ribbon-esque tabbed UI and a slim, simplified single panel toolbar. A safe mode feature has been added. This will let you start LibreOffice with a temporary clean user profile and will be of help when trying to troubleshoot or fix a broken configuration. Wallpaper contest for Ubuntu 1704 Zesty Zappers has opened. They're looking for photographic or illustration type wallpapers. Looking through the contest entries, most of them so far are photographic images. To be honest, I'm not sure how many actually suit the Zesty Zappers theme, really. I mean, there are some quite interesting artworks. I notice some of them can't be used, though, because they haven't got the correct Creative Commons license. OB Revenge, the Arch-based distro with Openbox for a desktop that I reviewed a couple of weeks ago, has been added to DistroWatch. Now, good luck to them, it's been more of a unique distro and a breath of fresh air. Google Chrome 56 has been released this week. I wouldn't normally talk about browser upgrades, but this time is a bit different, as we are seeing Google highlighting unencrypted websites. I discussed how useless warning messages are in computing a couple of days ago, but I have to say, at least this not secure message in Chrome doesn't require an action from a user. Right now it only appears on pages containing a password or credit card field on unencrypted HTTP websites. I think it is a very good feature because of the simplistic language given. Very few people will understand the difference between HTTP and HTTPS protocols, but a simple secure and not secure message is far easier to understand. Stats from Mozilla's Firefox show that just over 50% of page loads have been over HTTPS this week. Remember, that's not 50% of websites because they are talking about page loads. So the majority will be the top few internet sites. Google, YouTube and Facebook are all HTTPS. Stats from Let's Encrypt do show a healthy growth in the number of domains registered using their free certificates. Even my own little website has a free HTTPS certificate provided by Cloudflare. There has been a rise in popularity of retro gaming thanks to the NES Mini and there has been a new retro gaming distro released for the Orange Pi development board called the Retro Orange Pi, or Retro Orange Pi. It's a gaming system that allows you to play games made for older gaming consoles like Nintendo, Sega, Atari, etc. It is designed for the inexpensive Orange Pi family Pi boards, plus some other boards with the H3 processor. It is similar to Retro Pi for the Raspberry Pi, but going the Orange Pi routes can be cheaper. The Retro Orange Pi includes Retro Pi 4.1, Emulation Station, Kodi 17, Retro Arch or Lib Retro, plenty of retro game theming, and tailored tweaks for a gaming ready system. 
all riding on top of a full Ambien operating system. And there is a guide written on how to set it up from pyboards.com. I have an old guide for creating a similar setup on a desktop based Linux system. Over Christmas time, I cobbled together some assorted spare hardware and got a fully functioning system running. It was a bit of a laugh playing some old Super Nintendo games on a big screen TV with wireless PS3 controllers. And finally, Softpedia reports that it is possible to play Doom 2016 and Hitman Absolution on Wine Staging 2.0. Looking at the Wine HQ page, Doom is indeed rated as Platinum, meaning that it will work perfectly in Linux, exactly as it would in Windows. Excellent news if you want to play a modern first-person shooter game that really respects the roots of the early Doom games. I have to say that despite being stuck in the era of Quake 1, I think Doom would be an interesting game to try, although I'm not sure my ageing system is going to be powerful enough. Well that concludes the week of Linux news, thanks for watching and I'll see you all later.